Hey there, traders. This is Sam with your E-mini futures trading and market recap for Friday, October 18, 2024. The time is currently 7.37 a.m. Eastern. What we do here on the Ticks and Trades channel is find high probability trade setups in the E-mini futures by using data in the SPY, also known as the spiders. And we do that by identifying levels of support and resistance in the SPY, like you see here on this chart, long before the opening bell. This removes a lot of the guesswork of trading during the open session. We already have a plan going into the day based on the work that we've done early in the morning. So check out the description below to learn more. There's not much to say about the levels on the board today. I purposely have not included some of the levels I calculated just to be a little more conservative in case they do something out of the ordinary today. I have no way of knowing if something crazy might happen. It's more of a gut feeling that I just want to respect. Better to have less chances of getting into trouble if volatility picks up. Today could be perfectly benign. We'll all know by the closing bell, won't we? I should point out that the level at 582.28, shown in the light blue line, is the close from yesterday. Nothing more, nothing less. Other than being the close of yesterday and thereby creating a little gap that could get filled sooner than later, I found no other reasons why that level could act as support today, assuming the spiders open above and come back down to this level at some point. Currently, they are 583.90, and you can see price up here. So this level at 582.28 might become significant later on. We'll see. And the dashed lines at the top are a zone between 586.32 and 585.92. If price gets up there today, that whole area could provide overhead resistance. Whatever happens, we will come back to this chart after the closing bell to discuss the aftermath. Any trades in the E-minis based on these levels in the SPY will be dissected. We are going to either make money and learn something in the process. That's the 80% likelihood of what can happen. Or we might give some money back to the market, which is the 20% probability. But if that happens, we will still likely learn something in the process. Catch you on the other side. It is now the next day coming at you on Saturday afternoon. Not a lot of excitement in the market on Friday, but there was one official trade per the strategy we use. The spiders hit one level, which to be precise was 584.59. That's what the five cent buffer applied. And they did kind of come up close to the operating level around 11.30 a.m., but it wasn't close enough to count as a near miss. So when they got back up to this area over an hour or so later, it was still on the table as a potential trade. So one thing you can expect to happen when you get a quasi near miss like that, that if price does revisit the level later, the odds are increased that they'll spike the level and find resistance a little higher. It's not an exact science, but if you pay attention to scenarios like the one that happened here, like a pullback, the area without being an actual near miss by what I define in my rules and they don't really consolidate under the level by going flat for a while so when they finally hit the level later well don't be surprised if now they have the energy to spike above for a bit so now your resistance should be a little higher than the originally calculated level so that's what happened here going short in the e-minis right here when the spiders hit 584.59 means you're looking for a base hit profit target of four points which is what the green reference line indicates. What you don't want to happen is for certain closes of the SPY to be above this other reference level, the line in red. That is what I call the fumble threshold. Fumble as in you dropped the ball and need to recover. Covered by the defense, first down Detroit. Does anybody really want to win this game? What a great job by Will Harris. Right but you were good on this trade. The whole time you were out of the money, and even above this fumble threshold, there was no reason to change course. Just stay in this short trade and give it time to develop. I don't know about you, but for years, I would trade the E-minis where I knew going into the trade that I had identified a great level of support or resistance to trade against. I'd get into the trade with a couple contracts, immediately see it get out of the money, like you see here. A few minutes later, I'm staring at it like a seven or $800 unrealized loss, and I'm starting to second guess the trade. I'm wondering, is this level really as strong as I thought it was? Maybe I'm wrong and I should bail out of the trade because I definitely don't want the trade to get out of the money more. Like, what do I do if I'm at $1,000 or $1,200 in the red? Should I bail out then? So does that sound familiar? Have questions like that gone through your head when you're in an active trade? I don't know. Maybe you've always had great willpower and never let your emotions get in the way of your trades. So maybe you can't relate to this. But I'm just telling you that way more often than not, when I was in situations just like this, where I went short at what I thought was a good level, and then very quickly the trade got out of the money, and I found myself hovering over the close at the market button ready to bail out. And I would hit the button, took the $800 or $900 loss, 
and to feel kind of a fleeting sense of relief because I thought, well, I averted a bigger loss because it looks like they are going to go higher after all, only to see them reverse about 30 seconds later, come right back down to my entry point, and then after a while, I see price come down and give what would have been a base hit. I would have made a good profit if I'd stayed in the trade. So closing out early was not the answer. So has that ever happened to you? Well, it took me a while to get a handle on this, but my solution to correct this way of thinking was to develop a process that forced me to stay in trades like this. Giving trades time to develop works out a lot more often than not. Sometimes they won't work out, and there are rules to account for those cases. But after a lot of testing and research and then putting real money at risk to see if I was able to overcome the emotional aspect by sticking to the rules I had developed, that's when I started to be consistently profitable. I believe this level here on Friday is a good example of how having a process and sticking to the rules was the ticket for pulling a base hit. As you can see, they finally came down and gave you a base hit of four points or a little more if you were adventurous right here about uh, 2 p.m. So giving trades time to develop work out a lot more than you probably think. So would you have taken a recycle trade when they got above and now they're coming down into it from the long side? Would you have gone long right here? Well, enough time had passed by the time they got out of this level for a while. They bounced around. I mean, you got a bunch of bounces here and long trades, but I want more time to elapse. So this was it. So would you have taken the trade after 3 o'clock on the long side? Yes, enough time had passed, but that's really the only thing going for that level at that time. I can give you several reasons why I would not have taken it. And by the way, about 12 noon or so, I closed up shop, left the office, got an early start on my weekend. I was not even around my screens when they finally did come up to this level here. So I was not in this trade. And I definitely was not around at 3 p.m. on a Friday. I would not be interested in getting into another trade at that point, which also means that while I do have a recording of the market up to about 12 noon or so, there's really no action and nothing to see. So because I didn't take any trades, nothing to really look at at the recording. But so what are the reasons why you may have wanted to avoid taking the recycle trade right here after three o'clock on the long side? Well, for one, volume was very low. I don't actually have the volume on my trading chart here to keep things clean and simple. I just know that from my other analysis charts. It was a typical Friday afternoon, kind of a sleepy market. Also, there were other indications on other shorter time frames that I use for analysis, like the five minute and the 10 minute to be specific, that were pointing to this area up here as kind of being an interim high. And they were on their way down in perhaps a bigger way. And no, in case you're wondering, like this area right around 585, 30 or so, uh, it was not a level that I had calculated Friday morning that I just chose not to put on the board. None of those other levels that I mentioned that I did not include, none of those were hit. So it's, not, it's a moot point. You just They found some type of interim uh, resistance here and bounced away, but that just happened to be what it is. It's something and you're able to identify in real time. So what I'm talking about is the charts are telling you that at this time, that area up here was important and there was something that was going on in real time and price was on their way back down. So I personally would not have been interested in Trading this level at this time of the day, taking everything else under consideration. But we're treating this as a process and going to assume that you were willing to jump back in the market to take a long trade right here. Actually, it would be five. Long trade would have happened at 584.69. That's the level with a five cent buffer applied on the other side toward price. Well, what would have happened? Once again, immediately out of the money, but you have your reference levels. They were out of the money the whole time, but no signals to change your course of action. Same as before, but also no profit realized after letting this trade develop, and now the closing bell is approaching. So what do you do? Well, I have a rule that says if you're in an active trade and the time is now within that 30 minutes of the closing bell, that no trade zone normally, then you should start to look for opportunities to get out of this trade at a break even or be willing to close at the market right before the closing bell, even at a loss. It's up to you whether you want to stay in a futures trade after the closing bell. I just don't do it. I usually start looking for opportunities to exit the trade around 10 minutes or so of the closing bell. So we're going to say that if you took this recycled trade, against the odds of it working in the first place, and you were hoping to squeeze a few more points out before the end of the day, well, you'd be good to jump out at your break-even price when they gave you a chance to do so a couple times. I'll just be fair and say that you lost a couple points on this trade. Again, the smart thing to do was not to get involved on in a long trade on a Friday afternoon in a slow market after seeing signals on other charts that price was probably getting weaker. Okay, enough talk about what could have been. Let's talk about what might be happening in the near future. We're looking at a weekly chart now because we have a weekly close to examine. Other than being fairly far above the 20 period moving average, is there anything bearish about this chart? No, there is not. Not if we look at this at face value. I mentioned the 20 period moving average, which is the reddish orange line here, because you'll often see price start to revert back toward the 20 period when it gets farther away than usual. This is nothing to bank on, but if you just go back and look at previous price action for any ETF or index in any other time frame, you'll see this behavior happen a lot. 
both in bullish and bearish markets, by the way. A clue you'd want to see that could tell you that this uptrend could be stalling out is a signal on one of these weekly candles. But we don't have that yet. Not for this week's close, at least. The time that it's taken the SPY to get where they're currently at from both of these little pullback areas, like here to here and also down here, both of these are significant or starting to be significant. So maybe next week we'll get a signal. We'll see. Would also help if volume is at or above the 90 period moving average here. That's the orange line. But check this out. These are Fibonacci price extension lines drawn from this low here to the high here before they pulled back to this low. What this will tell us is where the symmetrical move is based on this move from down here to up here and taking into account this pullback. So if you look at the points from this low to this high, and then you add that amount from this low to see where 100% would be, that's the kind of equal or the symmetrical move. So when price gets to, if price gets to 593.37, that's an equal move. What does this mean? All this really is is a target if price continues to climb. These FIB extension levels are valid because of how they already respected other levels along the way. Like, how long did price hang around this 61.8% after hitting it nearly to the penny back on this week ending September 20th and then pulling back? They spent over like three weeks fighting to get above, and when they did, it went straight to the 75%. And one week later, which is yesterday's close, now they're above it. So do we know if price will continue to climb all the way to this target at 100%? No, we don't know. There should be plenty of other smaller trades along the way, but consider this. If the SPY gets to 593.37, give or take a couple dollars, the futures will have hit 6,000 at the same time. And that seems kind of significant, don't you think? Could it be that this is the target before they stall out in reverse? I don't know who has the answer for that, but it's good to keep that possibility in the back of your mind. At any point between now and then, it would be easy for the bears to put up a big fight and push price down a lot. Like price could hang around the 75% for a while, and in the process, get closer to the 20 period moving average, and then boom, they take off for new highs again. Or, and don't be too surprised if this happens within the next few weeks, they could have a big pullback, like what they did back here during the first week of September. On the daily chart, it's easier to see how the 61.8% FIB extension was respected. This represents about three weeks of activity and a lot of good trades in here. October has been pretty good for us using this strategy. While we're on this daily chart, is there anything else we can learn? Not really. Yesterday's close was nothing special, right in the middle of what could be called kind of a beginning of a sloppy range developing. Also, above all the moving averages, nothing conclusive on this chart other than to say it's still bullish at face value. Volume has also been low, so that doesn't really help anything. On the hourly chart, you can start to see something that might become a range where price becomes constrained for a while. Too early to say for sure, though. Also, they are above all the moving averages on this particular hourly chart, so the trend is still bullish here. You can't say it's bearish unless the chart tells you something obvious, and they haven't done that yet, at least not on the SPY chart. Looking around at other ETFs and indexes, I do see things that are starting to look like divergences, so things could get interesting. But for today at least, the bulls are still trying to push price higher. If they can't succeed in keeping price elevated, there will be plenty of places to catch price as they fall where we can pull points from the market. We're looking at our two tracking logs now. The first one is the playing by the rules log. One level hit, it's the one here shown in L4, level 4. A base hit on the first trade. And then if you took the trade again on the recycle side, let's just say you lost two points. So you netted two. I mean, that's depends on what you would have done. I didn't take any trades. We'll look at Sam's trades right here, this log. So nothing, just the level that was hit, but I didn't do anything. So if you want to kind of glance through the averages and totals, this is where we're at. So that's a wrap for today. As always, it's all about sticking to the plan, trusting the levels. If you found some value in what we covered in today's recap, thanks for showing your appreciation. We'll be back in front of the screens on Monday with new levels and a new game plan. Thanks again, and have a great rest of your day.